left off with 92, and so now we're, uh, we're going to 1993. 1993, 17 and 7, Brad, uh, Brad senior year, and uh, Chad Getters, Jim Steffes, Alex Luck, Mike Mammon. You were second place in the league. Coach, you won your 500th game. And, and I actually do remember this game where we played Creighton in a holiday tournament at Augsburg. Mm -hmm. And Creighton was the eventual state um, champion, and we were tied with a minute to go in that game. Um, we lost to Hopkins in the semifinals. Uh, what do you remember about 1993? Well, I remember we had, uh, I think Marco got hurt yeah. in the tournament. And we we depended. On, he wasn't the only scorer we had, but Brad was kind of our, our leader, I would mm -hmm. say. And uh, he we 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 came back, and I think he missed a couple of games. Well, then he came back and played against Edina. Yeah. And a uh, tournament game. Yeah. And and uh, of course, of course, there uh, at that time. Eddie Edina. Eddie Edina. Was that Ryan or? No, 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 it was, uh, well, anyhow, he was, he said, I wouldn't expect him, him to do that, and he played well. Yeah. Uh, hobbling around and wasn't 100% on one leg. But. Okay. Jeff, 93, or what do you remember about that year? Well, you know what, you mentioned all these years right now, I, as I mentioned before, I went through all the practices. Yeah. But I didn't see any of the games. So oh, I was a sophomore yeah, coach. sure. And as soon as a sophomore coach, uh, done coaching again, I was on a road scouting. Yeah. Uh, I could tell you a lot about Armstrong that year because I think I saw them play about 18 of their games. Whoever we played, Armstrong played them the week before. Okay. Um, but I didn't see a lot of those games. In fact, the game that you guys lost to Hopkins, I believe I was over at Kennedy scouting on another section semifinal game. Okay. Uh, so I didn't. I don't remember a lot about the game. Sure. I didn't see a lot. I no. Maybe saw the holiday tournament. You remember you mentioned Creighton, um, but I didn't, was not at a lot of the games. I was I was I was on the road scouting. Okay. Uh, 1994, my senior year. 16 and 4. I'm nervous to ask about this year. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different team than the previous year or years. Uh, Lloyd Lee was a captain. Uh, our best player was Mike Spencer, who was a junior. Doug Hoffer was a sophomore. Mike Vegan, Dave Watson, Lane Kiffin. Uh, second place in the league. Uh, I'd like your thoughts. And Jeff, you actually coached a lot of these players with Jimmy when they were sophomores. What do you remember about the 1994 team, Coach? Well, I'd say uh, your second place in the league was a pretty accomplished job. And, and we had, uh, I think the league was pretty strong that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Who won well, it that year? Apple Valley. Apple Valley, okay. Apple Valley, yeah. right. And, um, was Zach Goring, was their point guard? Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember all that. But um, yeah, I thought we, we, we did very good and uh, end up and. And we were talking about the 90s, and each year we had double-figure wins. Mm -hmm. And so we, you graduate a certain amount each year, and yet the next group comes up and fills the void and does well. And that that was a group, I think. We had a couple of injuries that year, too. They mm -hmm. look back in there, too, which, which uh, takes away from the game, and somebody has to step up. Mike, you met Mike Spencer. Uh, Probably the most talented kid we ever had in basketball here. Wow, that's a statement. And he, yeah. uh, um, I mean, uh, did offensively, mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> we we tried to to uh, put him on some defenses, and, and he he couldn't quite comprehend them all, but he had such anticipation. Yeah. That he was there where you wanted him to be, and he'd pick off a pass or something, mm -hmm. and he'd show you a Division One talent kid. He would show you a, a different move every week, and you can talk about it. You can get tapes, but if a kid can see one of their own doing some of those things, they can maybe practice and pick up on it. And Mike was that kind of player. Sure, sure. Jeff, I remember, remember that crew. Yeah, I remember, I remember that crew. I'd, and uh, I think you yeah, always remember that. You you mentioned the records and stuff. I don't remember the, the, the records. No. I always remember the team so much more of the kids that were part of the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, that was a, it was a fun crew. 
Mm-hmm. We, had, we had him as sophomores. I don't know how what our record was even mm-hmm. as sophomores. Not very good. I don't remember, but I just you just remember and, um, the kids and the different personalities that there were not only in that group but every year. And um, it was fun for us to coach those guys. Mm-hmm. And you were part of that group as well. And um, some of those some of those guys in that group have gone on. Well, there was a lot of kids involved with football, wasn't that the primary yeah. sport? Yeah, yeah. so Lloyd played, played in the NFL, and, yeah. and Lane has had a lot of success yeah. coaching. So those are, I think, which has been kind of the characteristic, a lot of players you've had around here, they're just not focused on one sport. They're multi-sport athletes, and yet they have success at all of them. That's the kind of the model you wish all kids. They're good talented follow, kids, so, yeah. yeah. So, Coach, what do you remember about your last year? You would have had Mike Spencer back as a senior, and then Doug would have been a junior. Uh, so your two leading scorers back, and then this was, did you know that that was going to be your last year? Uh, not really, I yeah. guess. I hadn't planned on it, no. Okay. Uh, in fact, when it was my last year, when I retired that year, I walked out of school the last day, and I said, I enjoyed today. Yeah. So I wasn't the guy that was griping away, looking at the calendar and, and uh, trying to get out of it. I, I enjoyed my years of teaching and working with kids. Um you mentioned Mike Spencer, and, and he, he he had a game out at Chaska. Uh, the only time we ever had a, I don't want to blow this out of proportion, but the only time we had a three-second call, called the whole year. And he, he had 41 points. Oh, and wow. they couldn't stop him. And uh, then they called a three-second call. Violation on him in the latter part of the ball game. We lost by two, I think it was. Chaska was a good team. Mm-hmm. We, we played very well at Chaska to be in the ball game like that. Mm-hmm. But in other words, another good competitive kids again. Okay. okay. Uh, Jeff, ninety-five. So that so you're going to be the head person the next year. Remember anything about ninety-five? Well, I didn't know I was yeah. the head person next year at that yeah. time, but I just. Uh, um, who else was on that team with Spencer? Was that with? So it was nine. Uh, so he and Doug were the main and two guys. Players, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And um, Justin Hall was probably a, yeah. a junior, and Jared Peck, and that was again yeah. Justin Hall, Jared Peck, and two football players who had good college football careers. One of them in the NFL played in the well, NFL, multi-sport sure. athletes, and. Again, yeah, I, I just remember those kids from practice. I don't remember a lot about the game because mm-hmm. I still was out in the road scouting uh, during the varsity games. But you mentioned the two offensive players, but Peck and, and, and uh, Hall were good athletes and yeah. contributed mm-hmm. and uh, probably could have contributed a little bit more had they were given more sure. offense. We never really uh, any year said, okay, you're going to be our scorer. It was just... Uh, Hopefully the thing just happened that way, mm-hmm. and uh, they would take over, which they did. Okay. One of the things that has changed tremendously with uh, basketball is AAU, and I'd like to just hear your thoughts about AAU and how it's become kind of a year-round deal. I think it's kind of a two-headed monster. It's been good. It's been giving kids an opportunity to play year-round. And I hope they don't choose the kids choose to play year round, wow. dropping out of other sports. But it's also an opportunity where kids they play, they play. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of structure, not a lot of practice, and the development and building of fundamentals. And and you know during the course of a season you have at least we always have two or three practices before every game. Now in AAU you may have two practices a week, and then you have four <laughs> or five games mm-hmm. in a week, and it's just it's just flip flopped. And then we get these kids back in the high school year. Um, we're working till Christmas time to break a lot of bad habits that kids have formed. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying AAU is 100% bad because giving kids an opportunity to play against some talent, some. Uh, Go across the country and play different. Yeah, that, that they normally wouldn't have that opportunity. Yeah. But uh, uh, not a lot of structure to it. Mm-hmm. It's, and I coach AAU a couple of years and just realized during the course of those two years I coached, very rarely did we ever have our entire team. At a single practice, hmm. you had nine or ten guys. Your team you may have eight. You may have seven. Mm-hmm. And how much consistency? How complicated are things? Or not complicated, but how sophisticated are things? If you not have everybody every practice, so count, you just go and you, mm-hmm. you go and you play. Was it, what did it come? I think early nineties. 
I was going to say about, 20, about 25 years ago. Okay. We were practicing here one Saturday morning, uh -huh. and, and Jake said, you read the paper this morning? And I, I said, oh, yeah, I did. Checking scores. Did you see you're going to have an AAU program? And uh, he said, I don't know whether I like that or not. And I said, I don't think I do either. <laughs> because exactly what we thought, the bad thoughts we thought about have happened. And uh, I, I think you look at the caliber of, of basketball in the state now compared to prior yeah. AAU, it's, it's much better. Okay. But you say you, the habits are picked up and the problems that come along with it, um, like you say, you have kids and some basic fundamentals that, that you, you like to stress so much uh, mm -hmm. are really lacking. And all I do is, here's the schedule, we'll, we'll practice uh, one day and then we'll play four games or something like that. that mm -hmm. I always enjoyed the games. I always thought that, and I enjoyed practices. Yeah. What's the biggest way that the game has changed since you started coaching and you've been go you've been coaching. So the biggest change. Well, I, I think tempo of the game has changed an awful mm -hmm. lot from when I first started. Uh, Maybe three point, three point shot. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. The game is much is much quicker. And, yeah. and our our high school state high school league has, has kind of kept on pace with the changes that are happening on the, on the national level. Mm -hmm. We're one of the only few states that still play halves. That play halves. Mm -hmm. I believe it's most of the states still play quarters. Well, and we don't have thirty five, or we don't have a shot clock. No, but that's been our yeah. coaches association has been in great support of that. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I guess uh, it's been voted down by administrators throughout the state. The state high school league, and I guess I, 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 can, I can. How can you warrant paying a person around the clock and and the facilities that put a clock in when you're cutting teacher salaries and yeah. so forth? And but it's it's part of the game that um, I don't know how often a clock shot clock will go off in a high school game, but um, our our state is trying to keep up to, on par with the changes that are happening on the national okay. level. So one thing that's bothered me about the whole thing is that prior to AAU stuff. Every kid that played on every team had the same area code. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And that now it's, it's yeah, no, from all I, over the place. I have not gone to a state tournament in eight years simply because I don't like all-star games, and that's what we're doing. Okay. We're making all-star teams. Okay. So if you could change, that's a good lead-in here. If you could change, right, two rules about the game today. Right, the Minnesota High School League. They said you could change two rules. What rules? Well, he's working with it now, so I'll let him. What, what What would you change? Well, as far, far as the game or the policies surrounding the game, no, or it doesn't I, matter. You can. It doesn't matter. I I don't like that open enrollment. Yeah, that open enrollment thing. It's these kids they've up a lot of friendships during the summer, and they want to play with each other in the year, and it's 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 a high school game. It's. it's mm -hmm. It's a community game. You, I, I strongly believe you end up playing with your kids that you grew up with. Yeah. If somebody moves in. Somebody moves in from a different state or something like those lines. But uh, just to have somebody transfer schools because they want to play on that team, I, I think that is that's wrong. Yeah. And no allegiance to any school or town or community. No. Uh, it, it's just happy in the pros now. Mm -hmm. you, you don't give me what I want. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up. And yeah, you have super teams. Yeah. No. Uh, what does high school basketball have that college or pro basketball doesn't have? I don't know about what the, again, I don't care too much for the NBA game because win or lose, the athletes are still winners. They're walking off with a pretty good paycheck. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like watching all high school sports because the kids are playing for the, the, the sheer enjoyment of the game and sheer enjoyment of participation and uh, you really see how much it means to a kid when their season ends they walk off the floor with tears in their eyes yeah and you very rarely ever see that in a professional sport the team loses and they don't have tears in their eyes right out and it's because they they're still they still they're still a winner at least financially mm -hmm. and the college game and the high school game is they're playing for the few 
pure enjoyment of uh, participation. Okay. Now, Jeff, you work with players a lot of times year-round. You're doing stuff in the summer. Coach, do you think you would have liked that? Well, I, I worked in basketball camps. Yeah, no, I meant, I meant specific to the Jefferson guys. If they were here, you know, well, every uh, week, you, would you have wanted that? Uh, I always wanted the kids to have somewhere to do what they wanted to do. Okay. They wanted to play baseball. They wanted to play basketball. I did start along with Lloyd Holm. Gosh, after this school opened, mm -hmm. junior high traveling league. And so he coached them. And I what year was that? In the 70s? 70s, yeah. Okay. And wow. uh, we, we would take, we, we'd get to gym. We, we'd probably go three weeks here and then uh, maybe two weeks here. And then we'd go to St. Louis Park, uh, Hopkins, I think. It was yeah. Of but we had, just to get the junior high kids acquainted with, with the high school. So you were one of the people that started. That. Well, yeah, we, we, and Lloyd Holm was wow. the organizer of it too. Oh man, uh, I'd like to transition to difficult coaching matchups, and it could be teams or um, players. Can you think of some of the top players on other teams that you have coached against? What? I see. I, so in the eighties, I mean, Kevin, you know, Kevin McHale comes to mind. You know, from the from the seventies. Yeah, Jim Peterson was. The, the yeah, uh, St. Louis uh, Park. I played against Pete all growing up since eighth grade, and he was. Oh, uh, He's a big kid. Mm -hmm. Big kid, and had a good NBA career as well. I don't know if I specifically think about. If I mention somebody's name, I'm going to know I leave somebody's name. Yeah. Out. Right. I, I just think we always played that. Uh, I'm not going to say anybody's name either, but schools that we played against, we were always, this is going to be a tough game no matter who they had. It's yeah, yeah that's, that's because right. of their, who was, who was coaching them. Okay. And, uh, and, and the community, you know, I, I looked, when I when I was in college, took a couple of, of courses, and uh, one of our, my college coaches too. We'd play, we'd travel by bus, and we'd play uh from Superior to La Crosse or mm -hmm. Stevens Point or something. Then we'd come home that night after the game. And it's, I usually set up talking with them, picking their brain about this or that. And uh, one of the things they told me was, when you get out and look for a coaching job, take a look at a school that's got a good background. You know, they not... <laughs> You know, they're assumed they like to win, and they have a good reputation of doing that, rather than, well, this Jefferson Open, we had to build our own. But when we, we did that, we tried all kinds of little things and gimmicks and so forth that you try to build up interest and so forth. And so I, I did a lot of that in coaching clinics, trying to pick up what, what do you do, what do you do. Mm -hmm. so. Most gratifying wins? Or difficult losses, or how long did losses? Maybe start with this. How long did losses stay with you? Did they did they eat you up, or were you able to get past them? Well, the nature of the game when you play now they play twenty five. We only when I started off you played sixteen games, mm -hmm. but uh, um, the ones that you really you've got some on your schedule. You look well. We should be able to win that one or that one and that one. Oh, this one is going to be tough and. Uh, and then sometimes you'd win one of those tough ones, and that would bring you over the hump. Of it. But I, I, I think you can't just uh, forget about that. you got to go ahead and work. You're, you're taking down notes. What are some things you didn't do very well in that game? Okay, those are things you got to work on, so you won't have to happen the next time. Mm -hmm. And so you learn by a loss. You probably learn more by a loss. You do more okay. by a loss than a win. Okay. You always say you hate losing more than you like winning. <laughs> yeah. um, but there are some, you feel good after a win. And, yeah. uh, and uh, then you know you got to go back to work again tomorrow because you got another game coming up. And you got to enjoy that. Make sure mm -hmm. the kids enjoy winning a game too. Just don't, you got to be positive with them. Okay.